Hi, everyone. I'm Luke Driscoll. I'm your host, and I'm one of the partners at CCS Fundraising. Welcome to the second episode of something we're calling Five Leaders, Five Questions in Five Minutes. It's a mini webinar series where we explore the challenges nonprofits have handled in the face of crisis and how we can apply these lessons learned to what we're facing today. In terms of our current situation and some of the unique implications to that, I think it's important to begin that this current situation is different than some of the previous times in our history, such as the aftermath of 9-11, the financial crisis of 2008, some of the natural disasters such as Hurricane Katrina and Superstorm Sandy. So in this case, we're dealing with both financial uncertainty coupled by a global public health emergency that's further compounded by the need for social distancing. So it's truly an unprecedented time for all of us, but we often have lessons learned from the past to guide us in the present. Our donors wanna know how these issues impact the organizations that they care about and what they can do to help. Today, we are joined by Kathleen Barrett, who's the CEO at St. Joseph's Villa in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Kathleen's been in the fundraising space for, dare I say, 35 years or more now, and has been at the Villa for uh, going on 14 years since 2006. Thank you, for, thank you for joining us today, Kathleen. My pleasure. Wonderful. Why don't we hop right into it? We had a couple questions. So maybe just right off the bat, could you give us just a short 30-second, one-minute overview of St. Joseph's Villa and what you do? Yes. St. Joseph's Villa uh, was started in 1834, and we've been open seven days a week, um, 24 hours a day since then. We're a social services agency that primarily focuses on education, housing the homeless, mental health, and autism and other developmental disabilities. We serve over 3,000 a year, and we have 355 employees. Fantastic. That is a great elevator speech, by the way. <laughs> so our second question, I, this is one of the things that we always find interesting during difficult times as a social service organization. Are you finding people are, are sort of stepping up and providing additional support, or what are you seeing as sort of what the response has been for your community? Well, um, the Richmond community is, is, uh, is very generous um, in the surrounding areas, and usually social services come to mind before the arts with most donors. This has been um, a unique situation that none of us could have been prepared for, uh, the donor or uh, our organizations. But people always tend in crisis to count their own blessings and want to help others. As far as the foundations and different ones, they have been focusing primarily on medical supplies, um, helping uh, child care for the first responders, things of that nature. So sometimes general social services or, uh, well, working with the homeless comes in too. But people think about it and we, we ask for help. Yeah, that's certainly the important thing is like all things in fundraising is asking. So that kind of leads us a little bit to our, our next question. And you've actually done a couple campaigns over the years, including one during the, during the height of sort of the 2008 recession and actually you're in the middle of one now. What are your lessons learned from those experiences? Well, the first campaign, which was in 2008, um, St. Joseph's Villa had never done a capital campaign in 100, that time, 75 years. Our board had never actively raised money. Um, it was a campaign to sort of save the organization. I was new. A lot of the board members um, were new. I had a reputation of being a fundraiser, but everybody was, you know, nobody was real secure going into this campaign. And the sense was the board wanted us to stop. And I told the staff, I said, we're gonna put on blinders and we're going forward. We're not even gonna pretend that's an option and we're gonna go through this. And it worked for us, it took us a little bit longer, but there was more money left on the table because a lot of the big organizations in Richmond stopped their campaigns. So when we went to foundations, we had a better spot at the table and so on. And we acquired so many first time donors because we just didn't have donors at the villa um, before the campaign. So we made a lot of friends. That in, in turn helped us when we succeeded with that first campaign. It let these people who had given money on faith 
to an organization who had never done a campaign. It let them know that, yes, we could deliver. And they were some of the first people who came um, to help us in the second campaign. No, that's great. That's great in terms of that, having the courage and moving ahead and uh, certainly the, doing the vital work that you do. And that, that leads to our next question. Um, what, what's what been proven to have been successful today as you kind of navigate some of the challenges that are presented by the COVID-19 issue? I mean, what's 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 working? Well, everyone, when the governor closed the schools and we have four schools and we don't get paid if the kids aren't in the school, uh, we were overnight looking at a $3 million deficit possibly. And so we, everyone was sort of paralyzed and I had had uh, experience in disaster fundraising <laughs> before a um, disaster organization when I was with Red Cross. And, you know, I just got the team together and I said, we have to lead by example. There were 30 some people in the room and they were all worried about their own jobs. They were worried about everything. And I said, if you think the sky is falling, everybody around here will think that. And so we just uh, buckled down and worked with everybody. We communicated immediately with the board to tell them every step I was taking as CEO, um, things that they might not even have thought to ask. We work with a lot of government agencies and so on. So it was complicated, but, um, and then our COO followed up the next week with a update. And I had, in the meantime, had called everybody uh, for my three boards. And, and they appreciated that. They were worried about their own jobs, their own companies, the restaurants that were closed and things like that. But um, we had to show that, that we were the strength in the storm. Oh, that, that's great advice. And I think that, you know, kind of thing in terms of uh, it's a nice kind of transition to our final question, which is when you kind of have to stop, you know, you have to plan, you have to act. What, what kind of final advice would you offer to other leaders at this time, like you who are out there doing it every day? Well, real often in my business, I feel like I'm conducting an orchestra or a dance group that's dancing on quicksand. I use that expression all the time because we have 23 different services in our, uh, at St. Joseph's Villa, all independently run. And so there are a lot of moving parts at all times, but everybody looks for a leader who is confident, who has the courage, who is gonna communicate, communicate and communicate um, the whole time. And whether they wanna hear it or not, they don't have to open your emails or answer your phone calls, but you're making the effort. And St. Joseph's Villa has survived the Civil War, two world wars, and so on. And I just keep telling um, the staff, we're standing on the shoulders of the nuns that kept that started the villa and have kept it going all these years, um, including when Richmond was burned right around their orphanage. And we, we can't be frightened by anything. And we'll make this happen, and the villa will continue. Uh, absolutely. You know, women still run the world, Kathleen, thanks to people like you. <laughs> The places like St. Like Joe's Villa. Oh, well, it's, there's a lot of truth to that. And uh, thanks to <laughs> you uh, and other leaders in the nonprofit space doing amazing work, uh, you know, doing, reaching out and making the world a better place. So I think we're hopeful that uh, today's advice and your time today was very appreciated. So thank you. You're welcome. And we want to thank everyone for listening today to our five leaders, five questions, and maybe not exactly five minutes, but uh, a few minutes. And we hope you join us for our next installment. And thank you and have a great and successful day.